the six um, main books that we wanted to focus on. So now we're going to do a lightning round of some books that we can't not talk about. And one of the first ones is Armand Gladfelder's The Flowering of the Cadoras Palatinate. Um, this is an excellent book when you want to look at um, local geographies, kind of what Dami did with her preserving the history of Newburytown. This goes from 1838 the whole way to 1988. And he talks a lot about um, local politics, state events, national events, movements like the environmental movement, um, what World War II was like in New York County. But he also talks about how culture changed. So there's this really interesting segment in here about when the railroad came through York County and how people then, because of the railroad, started getting exposed to all these different ideas because people were moving. So I thought that was really cool looking at culture shift. And then, of course, he has one of my favorite quotes ever written in a book about York County. It's in the early 1900s, and he said, <clears throat> now mind you, I, I love York County, right? I love York County. But he said, he was talking about how York County was a little backwards. He said, the average farm woman still stood up to urinate. <laughs> 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 he said, the men snapped the mucus from their nose with thumb and forefinger. Oh. I know. And I'm like, oh, like that's a, there's a, like, that's a little rough, but like, I don't know, a little part of the game. I think it will leave. Like, good for you. <laughs> Notice how everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Um, this, I did not get on Amazon. Um, this was actually a pretty expensive book. Um, I, I do think it was about $100 if I'm remembering correctly. Um, I had to find it on an extra um, website that um, for like ex rare books. And you can get the library, but I had a hard time finding this. Um, Jim, I did write in it. So, I, I know, I know. Oh, did you see the small frown he made? He was like, Ugh. That's not a small frown, that's a big frown. Yeah. Um, that's going to be his little bobblehead that pops up on the screen. It's just going to be like, Gee, I know. Um, <laughs> and while I do love the book, um, Armand never discloses any um, sources that he used or his methodology. So if you're going to use it, fact check it, and, um, because I'm not saying it's wrong. Uh, I'm just saying that I use it more as a primary source because he didn't disclose where he got his information. And our next one is Lee Smallwood's book, York at 250. Do we have that to hold up? Mm -mm. No, okay, unfortunately. So that looked at York City at its 250th anniversary in 1991, and he wrote, A great history reflects the greatness of a people. It is their reputation chiseled in time to speak of why they are and what they are capable of. There is no future for people who deny their past. If you don't know who you are as a people, then you don't know who you are as a person. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, it book. is. Another one of our favorites is uh, June Burke Lloyd. She wrote Faith and Family. This is all about um, York County Frochter and Top Shine. So it's really cool about her book is that she uses a lot of pictures. So it is beautifully done uh, with lots of credible research and lots of pictures of all of the wonderful Frochter that we have here in York. And if you don't know what Frochter is, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to go get the book. book. <laughs> um, so she looks at a lot of local patterns and the importance of religion of the people, and she goes back um, many familial lines. Um, and, yeah, so it's a great book. It is, and we quote uh, June a lot in our research yeah. and our presentations. So. Yeah, she's awesome. She is. And then um, a best local level town book, River and Ridge. Um, so this one, do we have this to hold up? No, we don't have this one either. See, none of the books she chose for me to talk about. <laughs> I can't believe that. Uh -huh. I don't know this one. <laughs> I can't have my Vanna White moment. So, um, as the title suggests, this book explores two large influences on Delta and Peach Bottom life. So, the Susquehanna is a fishery and its transportation assets with canal and ferry. And the 12 mile ridge from which Building Slate was quarried, most notable for a century after 1845 when the skilled Welsh quarrymen came to town. And we'll be going down there soon for another one. We are, episode. yeah. So, Stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> so another book about your accounting history is Hex by Arthur Lewis. The subtitle is A Spellbinding Account of Witchcraft and Murder in Pennsylvania. So when I was at York College for my undergrad in history and education, I wrote my senior thesis on the Hex murder of 1928. And so, of course, I got this book, and I went to the archives, and I was reading it. And as a naive 21-year-old, I took everything as fact. Later, when I went back and reread it, um, this book does have a – it's going to keep your attention. It is interesting. There are some truths about what happened with Limeyer and Raymar and Curry and what happened down in Raymar's Hollow. It's always also very problematic. He talks a lot about superstition, and he demonizes people, and it's also not 100% true. Um, this was written in the 1960s. So if you want to know the actual truth, 
get this book. Mm. Yeah, so if you want to learn the real truth, uh, you have to read Ross McGinnis's Trials of Hex. And he became a lawyer and a local expert on the topic, so he thinks that is the factual account that we want you yeah, to go to. That's the book you get. Yeah. So we also have a lot of kids' books here in York County, too. Yeah. Um, so I uh, was a teacher at Milton Hershey School, and I taught with Lisa Petropoli, and she is a co-founder of a um, publication company called Creo and Teeth, which means I believe in you in Spanish. And what she does is she has local students. Um, Ashlyn is from Billsburg, and she gets them to write books. One of our favorites is Dante El Elefante, and when you read it, it has both the English and the Spanish. So these go all around the world. They are international books because they're trying to promote literacy. She's trying to promote students. She's trying to help people learn both Spanish and English. Um, so shout out to Lisa. Uh, I, I think this is really cool. And she wrote many different books. She wrote her own book called Kindness. So this is just a, a, a tip of the iceberg. Super cool. And then we have Tavon and Tiana Parker. What do you mean? Thank you. <laughs> what do you mean? A book about a curious little girl who always asks, what do you mean? And it's a conversation between a father and his daughter who is searching for answers. Never be afraid to ask a question when you're confused, it reads, which I think is a great message. Yeah. yeah this is a very cute book. Um... One of my like local heroes is Earl Schaefer. So yeah. Earl Schaefer was the first person to walk the entire <clears throat> AT um, and the Appalachian Trail, and he did it after World War II because he wanted to walk off the war. So for him, it was meditative um, because there is a high chance that he had PTSD. So there is a great book called 2,000 Miles to Happiness, Earl Schaefer and the First Through Hike of the Appalachian Trail by Andrea Shapiro. Um, I bought this down at the Appalachian Store Trail down over in Pine Grove Furnace area, but it is very beautifully designed and very written. Nice, yes. um, so I think it's kind of cool that there's like a York County guy and then they turned it into a book. And then you just mentioned Earl Schaefer. Yep. So we're going to talk about Silas Chamberlain, who wrote this book. So he's going to be with us in a few minutes for our extra episode. We're going to interview him. And the name of the book is On the Trail, A History of American Hiking. And I read this before I even knew Silas. Oh, really? Yeah, so that was cool. Uh, but yeah, so again, a York County native. Yeah. And someone we're going to be talking to in a little bit. 